44 years, no medal. Hardly anybody gave you a chance. You were injured. You had serious pain. You had to, you had to sort of brave all of that. When I take you back, was it possible? Did you ever believe that you could do it? Or it happened to you and then it just got better and better and better? How did Leander Pace, the phenomenon of Leander Pace, happen to India? Good evening, everyone. Um, I was born to a Bengali mother and a Portuguese father. My parents were at the 1972 Munich Olympics. Thank you. And when they were at the Munich Olympics, Palestinian terrorists took 12 Israeli athletes hostage and eventually blew them up in a helicopter at Munich airport. The games were shut down for four days. Civilians were not allowed inside the village. The athletes were not allowed outside. I'm not sure what my parents were thinking, but I was conceived in those four days. <laughs> so I don't think I had a choice. I think the choice was already made. Some of us are born into legacy. Some of us not necessarily handle that legacy really well when we're young. We tend to grow up as rebels. But as you grow older, you understand the culture, the community that we're born in. And when you play gully cricket and gully football in the streets of Kolkata, the thing you want to do is to emulate your parents. I wanted to emulate my dad and win an Olympic medal for you. Rahul Todi, when have you been a Leander Pace fan? I've been a Leander Pace fan and a friend since his junior Wimbledon days, 1990. I've known him for, what, 34 years? I've done 126 interviews, 127 going on, maybe even 200. But tell me your favorite Leander Pays memory. I think I uh, shared it with Leander very recently. Of course, Leander being a Calcutta boy and even one as a junior, it was definitely a proud moment. But I honestly became Leander fan uh, in the Olympics uh, when he won his medal. Uh, I How was old were you then? Huh? How old were you yeah, then? I was actually in Australia that time studying uh, my bachelor's program. Uh, and I remember because we hadn't won anything and the Australians were winning a lot and you know Australia is a sporting nation as Leander knows because uh, like me Leander also has an Australian connect uh, and everybody was every medal was celebrated and it, it was a low moment right it, it definitely was a low moment for me because I loved sports uh, all my friends there were people uh, one of them maybe not a friend but a good acquaintance was Michael Phelps they were studying at Bond University that time doing the swimming program and Bond had a great uh, swimming facility in Australia it was used as the Olympic training facility for the team as well uh, and and they would run after these guys you know uh, at any point he had three more university contracts in his pocket and it it it, it was big for me to be good in sports my country to be good in sports and leander gave me that moment i still remember it was afternoon i was in the brasserie uh, which is the cafeteria and five six of us indians were sitting because we all knew it was his match he was in the finals which was in itself a huge thing and we were all uh, watching his one of my other closest friends is also a lamartnia boy your batch in fact and uh, so, you know, we were all looking at and and then he won it. Okay, why am I not surprised that Rahul Todi was in the brasserie and not in class? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Not at all. But Leander Pace winning Wimbledon, making it to, to the pinnacle of your sport, being a Wimbledon legend of all time. How did that happen? Winning an Olympic medal, I still get it. But being Grand Slam champion, being number one, then playing with Martina and winning, defying all odds and winning medals at, at every possible age, defying age. Tell me that story. So as a young boy, I grew up not knowing what Wimbledon was about. I grew up a footballer, obviously, with growing up with the Mohan Bagans and the East Bengals and with the Bengali heritage and the Goan heritage. Football was my main sport. Um, I don't consider myself very talented in tennis, and as much as few of you might chuckle, an average height of a tennis player in the 80s when I started was 6'1". The average height of a tennis player in the 90s was 6'2". Today, the average height of a tennis player is 6'4". I'm 6'4". Sinner, who just won Djokovic. I'm not even talking the, the tallest ones, like a John Isner or a Karlovic or the other ones. I'm talking the average height of a tennis player today is 6 feet 4 inches. I'm 5'11 on a good day. 
in that I don't really possess a topspin backhand. So for me, Wimbledon was not something I dreamt of. It was not something that I knew about as a young kid, Borya. For me, it was playing for the flag. For me, it was playing for 1.4 billion people and proving that we could be champions in an individual sport. You know, it's one thing to do it in a team sport, which is very tough because the politics of a team sport, the selections of a team sport. Now, if you look at our national cricket team, you could have four India teams. I mean, your under-19 team are world champions better than your India A. So if you look at the way cricket is developed, I, I think that it's a great example for other sports to learn from. I think it's a great example for other sports to incorporate on how you can bring the past champions into not only governance, but into running of the sport today. And we'll get into that in a second. But for me, Wimbledon was never something that I dreamt of. And when I embarked to play Davis Cup for the first time when I was 15, um, I remember my Davis Cup captain, Naresh Kumar. I was 15 years old and he comes and knocks on my door and he says, so when are you going to play Wimbledon? So I said, sir, I just lost in the Australian Open final and I'm hoping to win Wimbledon in, in five months. And he said, uh, how are you going to do that? So I said, by working harder. So he said, how are you going to do that? I said, by working harder. And then five months later, when I won Wimbledon and came back, I understood the history of the All England Club. I understood what that green and purple meant. I understood what center court was all about. And I think as a young boy growing up in India, you never, you're not allowed to believe that you're going to be number one in the world. You're not allowed to believe that you're going to win 20 Grand Slams. If I had to really be honest, uh, my class teachers in school gave me extra homework to spend more time in school and not on the playground. Today, when you look at the class 10 board exams, the class 12 board exams that are going on right now, <clears throat> and you are a scholar, you know what I'm talking about. You've done not just Indian high scholastic, you've done international. All of our parents really wanted us to be very sound, to have bread and butter on our table. They wanted us to have a degree. They wanted us to do our masters. They wanted us to be an engineer or a computer scientist where there were guarantees. I was sitting in that, on that front row and watching the list of people that you have, all the list of people that you have, and you are so right. This is an elitist group. You are so right that not 99% of our country do not get the opportunity to play sport. And that's my next journey. My next journey that, is... That is my next question. Before I go to Rahul, what is Leander Pays going to do? If I ask you five years down the line, tell me the Leander Pays story. And of course, Shachi comes in there. Rahul, you will talk about the Shachi vision. But Leander Pays, what is your vision for sport? Your vision for the next five years? So my new Wimbledon is in the next 15 years to have 250 million kids playing sport. Yes, that's a big number. But here's the how, right? I was very blessed to be born into this family of legacy. My dad has 60 years of sports science knowledge, sports education knowledge, sports medicine knowledge. A lot of the people in this room have dealt with my dad and worked with him. You guys know the amount of knowledge that he had. I figured that that knowledge should not just rest with our family. So I've taken dad's 60 years of knowledge and in that COVID time, I put all that knowledge together, the num amount of archival work whether it was in books, in magazines, in computers, in hard disks, got all that together and I put 40 years of my knowledge together and I approached a, a very dear friend, uh, someone who I look up to a lot, Mr. Murthy at Infosys and I said, sir, uh, can I talk to you? And he goes, I don't know how to play tennis, what do you want from me? And after the initial chuckle, I uh, am taking this 100 years of knowledge and wanting to impart it all across our country. I think that if you're going to do anything, it starts at home. And as much as I'm really attracted to go into the Middle East and do it and go into America and do it and go into Australia and do it, countries that are so far ahead in sport than we are, I believe it starts at home. Um, I feel like I'm very lucky to have a partner in Srachi. Srachi Sports is something that we're just starting up. Rahul and the whole team sitting, standing in the back there. Guys, can you stand for a second, please? So that's the Srachi Sports team. And uh, I purposely asked them to stand up so you can recognize them and give them trouble later. And uh, we love to collaborate with people who are doing great work in sport. One such lady is right here in front. Uh, Deepthi, can you please stand up for a second, please? 
and by the way, she speaks tomorrow. So we will celebrate Deepthi and her work tomorrow in any case. So in Strachi Sports, we've got a, a vision to take all this sports knowledge and share it around the country. And I'm going to leave Rahul to do that. But I'm really excited about this new partnership. Bolo bhai, what is the journey? What is the vision? What is the plan? So thanks, Lee. Um, so uh, I would just continue on the Australia story before. before. So during those times, I used to travel a lot in Australia. And uh, uh, like I mentioned, people like Michael Phelps, uh, Thorpe were, were studying at Bond and I used to see their lifestyle. And uh, I always wanted to be a sportsman. I wanted to play cricket, uh, tennis. I tried, but I was never good at it. Uh, but I always thought, uh, uh, you know, I, I had some of my friends who were in class 11, 12, that time used to play for the cricket team. And I used to think that can they, can they become the next Indian player, my friend. So anyways, I got to Australia and I saw these rugby players, these footy players, these uh, players playing, uh, doing swimming making million billions of dollars at that time and, and owning Porsches and Ferraris from their own money. And I used to always think that will this happen in India? And very recently, uh, and more so since my association with East Bengal Club, I f felt that the Indian ecosystem is ready. So it was a huge fanboy moment. I think these are the signs that, you know, our society has developed. You know, 20 year, 25 years ago, Leander's father knew the value of sports. He encouraged him. He made him quit his school so that he could continue in sports. How many parents of those days would allow? If you went and say cricket, football, and in Bengali, I'm saying, You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very common word. But today, it's not true anymore. So that is where the journey is. That is why the journey is be a part of this large ecosystem, which we all are part of already in, in, in many ways. Um, and like I said in my earlier session, uh, both of us want to start at the grassroots. So education is what uh, we would we would focus on um, initially. Uh, we are, uh, you know, we are going to strategic stake in the ASOS campus in Barasat. Uh, and because of our access to townships you know we, we are looking at multiple campuses multi-discipline and like i said in the morning all our real estate assets and now like lee mentioned shrachi and leander will work together not only on sports but even in real estate ventures because leander brings in a lot of value uh, outdoor fitness uh, creating concepts for 5 acres, 10 acres, 20 acres, 50 acres um, is, is Leander's uh, learning over the years, his experience. Shachi brings in the real estate and, and I think uh, what we all add along with my team is a lot of passion uh, and the love for sports.